Electronics. This is part two of the Collins KWM2 transceiver repair. In part one, I replaced that smoked neutralization cap, but I found that I was not able to set the bias current on the output tubes. It kept creeping up. So I discovered that the negative bias is not within tolerance. Also, we have motor boating in the audio gain of the KWM2. Both of those pointing at problems with the power supply. So let's take a look. All right, so here is the KWM2. The new problem that I'm gonna go after is repairing this source of motor boating and the AF gain. Listen to this. And if we pan over here, you'll see the negative bias is only about negative 52 volts. Even if I adjust it, okay, that is about the maximum negative voltage I can get and needs to be about 70 to 90 volts to set the idle current on those output tubes. So what is in common between the negative voltage being out of tolerance and the motor boating in the KWM2? I think I know what it is. So you can see the power supply caps in the 516 power supply have been replaced so I do not believe there's any issues with the filtering in this component, I believe the problem is on the main chassis of the KWM2. There is a capacitor sitting right under here, which is a multi-section filter cap. That's original. And now let me show you underneath what I also found, but I believe the best course of action right now is to replace all of the electrolytics in the main radio. Well, here's the bottom side of the KWM2. And you can see she's pretty much all original, including the old original filter caps. The multi-section cap I showed you, and he's kind of located down there. I'm going to do a little digging to get to that. But then you've got these four microfarad sprigs. There's one here. There's one here. And if you look at this one especially, take a look at the end. You can see it's kind of blistered out a little bit. Okay? So more than likely... Those things are kind of old and leaking, which you'd expect from something this old, right? This is like 1962. But here's the alarming part. Right here is the emission switch, so it's a multi-section wafer switch. Look underneath of it. I don't know if you can see this too well. Put some more light on it. There is a bunch of goo over the chassis, right down in there. Okay, Let it come off. So there's all this splattered goo all over the place. And if you take a look, right down there, right behind this tube socket, you'll see an electrolytic cap. It's really hard to see. It's a black cap, but it blew its end out and shot all the electrolyte all over the chassis. So it's obvious that that cap needs to be replaced too. Other than that, I spotted a 100 microfarad cap hiding over here. And I'll check the schematic and verify that I've covered all of them, but we're going to change all the caps and retest this radio and see if all those problems go away. So here's C106, the main filter cap on the chassis of the KWM2 mounted behind the meter, and it has a little platform on top of the pot. Okay. The issue is with this cap is it's a slim line design as compared to most filter caps that you see in radios. So unless you want to put some standalone caps under the chassis and leave this in place for cosmetics, you have to locate a replacement. And the only one I could find is this guy right here. And it's actually made and distributed by KE9PQ. So he makes all kinds of cool original type replacement components for these vintage radios. So this is what we're going to install. 
So we're going to start with the main filter cap. Now you can see this pot has kind of an interference fit, so you're not going to be able to get it out too easy. So I've removed the knob, and I'm going to take this nut off, swing that pot out of my way, and I should be able to lift the cap right up. To gain access to the bottom of the cap, this four microfarad guy's in the way. So, we'll go down there. We'll snip him loose, because I'm going to replace it anyway. Get it up out of there, and now I can see the filter cap. Next, I'm going to just take my wire cutters. I'm going to clip off those cap leads and keep all the components wired the way they are to leave me a little road map. So everything is cut loose. Everything just kind of suspended there. Okay. Now you can see the triangle over here, square here, and the blank is over there. So our new cap will go in just like that one. So at this point, I can just reach underneath because I've removed the tabs completely. I just twisted them off. This guy will pop right out. And I can just bring my replacement right in there. Twist the tabs, we'll get her soldered up. Now keep in mind, this is an aluminum chassis, so you're not going to be able to solder those ground ears to the chassis, which is unfortunate. So you have to make sure to bend these tabs and kind of rock that cap. Make sure you have a secure connection, because that's about the only way you're going to get it. For the fun of it, Let's check the old cap that we replaced against the new one. So here's section A, should be about 30 microfarads. You can see it is. Here's our new one, about the same. Here's section B, I have nothing. Here's my new section B, 20 microfarads as you'd expect. And here's C, which should be about 15. And there's the other one. So yes. We did have an open section of that original filter cap. I'm hoping that that was causing the motor boating. So there she is. New filter cap is installed. Everything's soldered back in. Now, I have to replace these four microfarad caps here, here, and dig out the one down there that exploded and, of course, clean the chassis. So I've replaced all the electrolytics underside on the KWM2. One thing to note is on the new filter cap, when they made that, they brought the leads from inside the cap housing and they wrapped it around the bottom of the post and soldered them. So watch how much heat you're putting on those cap posts so that you don't desolder the internal caps. There's the new filter cap installed. You can see there is a little more room. It is a little bit shorter than the other. So putting the pot back in is a piece of cake. All right, so here we go. Initial test. We're going to monitor that negative bias and check out that audio output and see if the motor boating stopped. It does not look as though it helped the negative bias at all. That's a bummer. But what about the audio? Pot's a little dirty, but the motor boating is gone. More than likely it was that main filter cap that was causing that issue. So in part three, we're going to continue to investigate the negative bias issue. And I noticed another issue is normally when you turn on the KWM2, you'll see the meter deflect, then it'll click, and it'll go back. That is intermittent, and at this time, it is not returning to zero. And I have two tubes down here, some 6AZ8s that are not lighting. So if we inspect the pins on V1, which is one of the tubes that aren't lighting, you can see the pins in there are black with oxidation. That could definitely attribute to the fact that it's not lighting. The other thing, I reviewed the schematic, and one side of the filament circuit is relying on the mechanical connection to this aluminum chassis. So that may be causing our issues, because I have several tubes now that are lighting intermittently. 
and that could be plaguing this thing with all kinds of issues. So here's how it should normally act. Watch the meter. Fall to the left. Got audio. And those tubes are lit. The tubes that are intermittent are V2, V12, V4, and V3, and V1, as a matter of fact. So I lose a whole string of them. So there's probably just a bad connection somewhere. The good thing is, we've got AF gain with no motor boating. Well, it appears as though this KWM2 is plagued with several issues. However, it's looking now like the common denominator for the negative bias issue and other intermittent failures are due to poor grounding. So in part three, we're going to investigate that. But for this one, changing the filter caps and resolving the motor boating has been resolved. See you in part three.